Have you ever wondered how airplanes, race cars, and even some of your everyday gadgets stay so strong yet so lightweight? The answer often lies in a special type of aluminum alloy called duralumin. This material has been a game changer in industries that demand strength without the bulk of heavy metals like steel. But how is duralumin actually made? What makes it different from regular aluminum? In this video, we'll break down the fascinating process of how duralumin comes to life, from raw materials to its final high-performance form. So, stick around as we explore the science and craftsmanship behind this remarkable metal, right here. On History of Simple Things, Duralumin is an aluminum alloy that combines aluminum with small amounts of copper, magnesium, and manganese. The result is a metal that retains aluminum's lightweight nature while gaining impressive strength and durability. Originally developed in the early 20th century, duralumin quickly became a favorite in aviation and automotive engineering. Unlike pure aluminum, which can be too soft for heavy-duty applications, Duralumin is strong enough to be used in aircraft frames, military equipment, and even bicycle components. But its real magic lies in how it's made. The journey of Duralumin begins with its core ingredient, aluminum. Aluminum is extracted from bauxite ore through a refining process known as the Bayer process. This involves crushing the bauxite and mixing it with sodium hydroxide, which dissolves the aluminum oxide within the ore. After several purification steps, what remains is alumina, a white powdery substance. This alumina is then subjected to an electrolytic process called the hall hero process, where it is melted and transformed into pure aluminum metal. But pure aluminum alone isn't enough. To create duralumin, we need to introduce other elements like copper, which enhances strength, magnesium, which improves corrosion resistance, and manganese, which stabilizes the structure. These elements are carefully measured and combined to ensure the final alloy has the desired properties. Once the raw materials are gathered, they go into a furnace where the aluminum is melted at temperatures exceeding 660 degrees Celsius, 1,220 degrees Fahrenheit. The additional metals, copper, magnesium, and manganese, are then added in precise amounts to achieve the correct composition. This process is highly controlled because even slight variations can affect the alloy's performance. During melting, impurities in the metal rise to the surface as slag, which is skimmed off to ensure a pure and high-quality alloy. The molten mixture is then thoroughly stirred to distribute the added elements evenly throughout the aluminum base. This step is crucial because an uneven mixture could create weak spots in the final product. Once the alloy is properly mixed, it's time to shape it into a more usable form. The molten duralumin is poured into molds to form large ingots or slabs. These are then cooled and solidified, usually with the help of water or air cooling techniques. The cooling process must be carefully controlled to prevent defects like cracks or air bubbles. Once solid, the ingots go through a series of rolling and shaping processes to turn them into sheets, rods, or other desired forms. At this stage, the duralumin is still relatively soft and not yet at its full strength. This is where heat treatment comes into play. One of the most critical steps in making duralumin is heat treatment. This process involves heating the metal to a high temperature, typically around 500 degrees Celsius, 930 degrees Fahrenheit, and then rapidly cooling it, a process known as quenching. This sudden cooling locks the alloy structure in place, making it much stronger. However, the metal is still not at its peak performance yet. To further enhance its properties, duralumin undergoes an aging process. This can be either natural aging, where the metal is left at room temperature for several days, or artificial aging, where it is heated to a moderate temperature for a few hours. 
This step allows the alloy's internal structure to settle, further increasing its strength and durability. After heat treatment, the duralumin is now ready to be shaped into its final form. This can involve rolling, cutting, or machining the material into specific components depending on its intended use. Whether it's being turned into aircraft parts, bicycle frames, or automobile components, precision is key to ensuring that the final product meets quality and safety standards. Machining duralumin requires special tools because, despite its increased strength, it remains softer than steel. Manufacturers often use CNC machines and other high-precision equipment to cut and shape the alloy without damaging it. One downside of Duralumin is that it tends to corrode, especially when exposed to moisture and air. To combat this, manufacturers often apply protective coatings. One common method is anodization which involves treating the surface with an electrochemical process that enhances corrosion resistance and improves durability. Sometimes, duralumin is also coated with pure aluminum, creating a protective barrier against oxidation. These protective measures help ensure that duralumin parts last longer and perform better in challenging environments, whether in the air, on the road, or in everyday consumer products. Before Duralumin components are used in real-world applications, they go through rigorous quality checks. These include strength tests, corrosion resistance assessments, and dimensional inspections to make sure the material meets strict industry standards. Aerospace and automotive industries in particular require extremely high precision and reliability, so every piece of Duralumin must pass multiple tests before being approved for use. Now that we know how Duralumin is made, let's talk about why it's so valuable. The most famous use of Duralumin is in the aerospace industry. Aircraft frames, fuselages, and even some spacecraft components rely on this alloy because of its high strength to weight ratio. Duralumin is also widely used in high performance cars, where reducing weight without compromising safety is crucial. Some high-end bicycles use Duralumin for lightweight yet durable frames, and even some consumer electronics benefit from its strength and lightness. From raw aluminum ore to a high-performance alloy used in aircraft and automobiles, the journey of Duralumin is nothing short of remarkable. This metal has changed the way we build and design, allowing engineers to create lighter, stronger, and more efficient machines. Next time you board a plane, ride a bike, or even use a high-tech gadget, take a moment to appreciate the science and craftsmanship behind Duralumin. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.